Alright guys, so I've gotten a number of requests from people to help when building some cool biological models on their 3D printer. And I just thought it would be easier if I made a video on a how-to that I go about in this process. So I've opened up Simplify 3D here, you can see on the screen, and I'm going to import a model of West Nile virus as a demonstration. Uh, you can do this with, with pretty much any model. Uh, in this case, it's a virus capsid. And this is something that I've worked with a, a number of times. I've printed a bunch of them. So here's West Nile virus. It's a cryo-EM structure. Now, I'm going to scale it up to um, 100 millimeters. That's just a good size I found on my build plate. Uh, so you can just work with this however you want. There we go. 100 millimeters big. And you can see it looks pretty cool. And uh, One of the problems, though, is that if I were to print it exactly as is, you would see here where I've highlighted, I would need some pretty big support structures. In the middle, I would need to support basically the entire thing, and then there would be no way to get those support structures out. They'd be trapped in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control D and duplicate this model so that we can split the model in half without doing any extra work with a, a, some other component like NetFab or a, a mesh mixer. Okay, so we've got two models, but they're in the same orientation, so we can't glue them together um, as is. So what we need to do is apply a 180 degree rotation along the x-axis. You can see it drops it below the build plate. We can hit center and arrange, and it will bring them both up. Now they are oriented uh, mirror images of one another. In the next step, we actually want to drop them down so that we're only printing halves. Again, this is so that we don't have to print uh, two different models that we've split out of Simplify. We know it's 100 millimeters, so if we set the Z offset to minus 50, you can see it drops them down halfway to the build plate. And there's stuff below the build plate, but we don't really care about that. Simplify 3D won't let us print it. So I'm going to print these in ABS uh, using uh, the right extruder on my FlashForge Creator Pro. Uh, extruder settings, those I'll let you kind of configure on your own, however you'd like. Layer, we're going to go with a 0.2 millimeter layer height, uh, three top layers and bottom layers, and two shells. In addition, uh, we're going to select to use a, a skirt. The reason we actually want to do this is that you always want to prime your nozzle. I get a lot of people that say that they're having problems starting their print. Just prime your nozzle with a skirt. We're going to use rectilinear fill. In fill. Uh, you always want to do concentric for these models. It just ends up turning out a lot better in the end product. 20% infill, uh, you can choose whatever you'd like. You can do 100% if you wanted. Uh, we always want to do supports for these because we're going to be printing kind of over to open air if we don't. So 20%. We're going to use a 0.6 horizontal offset, one upper and lower vertical separation, uh, normal support type so that it prints uh, supports wherever we need them, default settings with zero infill angles. This can all be changed if you want. Uh, for temperature, we're going to go with 100 degrees on my build plate. I use a PEI build plate. So I can get away with 100 degrees and have it stick. 230 degrees for the nozzle temperature. For cooling, um, the only thing we're going to do is have it adjust speeds if it's printing less than 15 second layers, just so that it has a little bit of time to cool. We obviously don't want to use the fan speed with ABS. I'm going to print at 50 millimeters per second, 100% uh, outline, solid, and support structure. I normally adjust these to be a little bit lower uh, for a better final product, but I found that in these models it actually doesn't change anything. So um, that's basically my settings for Simplify 3D. Again, it's just my slicer of choice. You can configure it however you want. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and have it prepare to make a print. So it'll go through and it will do its slicing thing here. And we'll, we'll see that this stuff down below the build plate disappears. And it won't actually try and print that. OK, so there we go. So this is how it's going to try and print their models. Um, again, now we have two halves of a model. We can start zooming through, and again, these are mirror opposites, so when we, we get done here in the next step, we'll be able to glue them together, and they'll fit together perfectly. So if you haven't seen Simplify 3D, the gray is, is support structure, and then the colored parts are the actual model, um, so we can kind of parse through the layers. But everything looks good, um, so we're going to go ahead and send this to my, my printer. We'll click uh, Save As here, and we'll get ready to go. So... I didn't want to just have nothing in my video. I, I thought it would be kind of cool to show a time lapse of the, the part printing. So here we go, time lapse of West Nile virus printing. Uh, 
nothing real special. Just wanted to show it being printed. All right, so that was a little uh, time lapse for the for the building of the part on my printer. Now I brought it into my lab, and what I'm doing is I'm cleaning out all of the support structure inside of those models, picking it off with pliers. And again, this is why we printed it in halves, is that we can easily get away with pulling those out. So now you can see um, I've indicated with these markers where I'm going to glue them together, so I, I already know what two pieces fit exactly together at what positions. I'm going to take some acetone. That's why I print in ABS. I can then just apply a little bit of acetone to these parts and it will partially melt the plastic and we'll be able to, to glue them together. It makes it nice and easy. Just apply a little bit here on all of the, the little pieces. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up those dots with each other and I'll, I'll glue this thing together. And it doesn't take very long for the part to actually set, uh, for it to re-harden and, and be connected into one piece. So I'm just kind of going around and inspecting it and squeezing it. And uh, There's actually a couple places where I needed to add a little bit more acetone to glue it together, fill in some holes. So I was just kind of doing that. There you go. That's what it looks like. Now, the problem with uh, the virus as is, is that it's very rough, and that's just a, a product of printing. Again, I printed it pretty quick. So I'm going to use something called ABS fuming, or uh, acetone fuming, where basically we can put our part into a chamber. I'm going to hang it on these paper clip hooks. It's real high tech. You can see the instrumentation behind me in my lab, and this is what I'm working with. So it's something that really anyone can do. That's my bucket. I've got some magnets holding paper towels to the sidewalls and, and a little wire. I'm going to apply some acetone to the entire uh, walls and the lid where I've, I've got the paper towels. Apply a little bit of acetone to the to the bottom here. Um, and I guess I just went with the whole thing. Um, basically what we can now do is hang our part inside of this chamber and the acetone fumes will melt the plastic and they'll do so in a very slow way. So it's a process known as annealing. So we're basically going to take all of the layers on the part and we're going to fuse them together into one smooth object. Um, think of like a Lego brick, which is ABS plastic. It'll become just like a Lego brick, uh, kind of smooth like that, depending on how long you let it sit in there. So you can see it's just kind of hanging there. It's not touching any of the towels or the bottom. Um, I'm making sure that it's not going to fall in and that it's high enough up. There's a little bit of an art to this I found, but it's something you can easily um, play around with. Now, I'm kind of a lazy person, so I'm actually going to speed up the process of getting the fumes in the, in the container going by adding some heat. This is just a heat gun. Uh, you do want to be careful you don't do this with a sealed container. Um, you'll notice that this is a screw top lid and I actually leave it ever so slightly cracked just so you don't build up pressure. After somewhere between 20 minutes or maybe an hour depending on the part, you can go ahead and open it. Now, I didn't show this, but I actually pulled it open and rotated 180 degrees to fume both sides evenly. Um, that's just something I've noticed. You can't really tell here, this is kind of some crappy quality, but uh, the part is actually now smooth and the layers are not present anymore. You can't see them. So what I'm doing is I'm just hanging it up. I'll show you here in just a second. I'm hanging it up in a fume hood. This is just something we use in chemistry labs and biology labs to, to get rid of fumes away from us. But I'm just hanging it there to kind of dry as it takes about 20 minutes to, to kind of get dry to the touch. And then you'll want to let it watch for, go for another maybe hour to, to fully cure. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'd love to make more movies if you guys are interested. Thank you.